Hello everyone and welcome to Blog Runner Everything and welcome back to the channel and to a special video taking a look back at the just ended 2020-2021 season and picking through everything that happened with an interest in picking out the lows and highs as well as taking a look at what went right and what went wrong during the season for Barcelona and then furthermore we'll be talking briefly about the way forward for Barca if they are to improve on the past season's performances and finally I'll give a verdict on the season as I will give my personal opinion and rating of the season as a whole. Now with all that said, if this is your first time here, welcome and I hope you like what you are seeing so far. Feel free to hit like on the video and to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on all the content that I will be bringing to you during the off season. So without further ado, let's get started with our season review. Coming into the 2020-21 season, Barcelona were in all sorts of turmoil. They had just suffered the most humiliating Champions League defeat in their history and they had a boardroom embroiled in corruption investigations, all whilst also being in the midst of hiring their third manager in the space of six months. And, lest I forget, their talisman and biggest legend asked to leave. So, the situation coming into the season was far from ideal and I believe that's worth taking into consideration going forward. Having said all of that, Barcelona, it's safe to say, have the following targets. First of all, we had to win a trophy because, you know, we had gone a long time without winning one. Secondly, they had to be competitive in Europe and in the league. And thirdly, a new era and a new wave had to be ushered in in the form of newer, fresher faces and a new mindset in the playing squad. I think we can all agree that this was the challenge that lay before Barcelona coming into the just aimed season. With all this in mind, let's now look at the lows and highs from the season for Barcelona. I will of course start with the lows just because, you know, I prefer giving the bad news first. The first real low for Barcelona came in the form of our performances in Europe and in the league. The Champions League is the premier competition for European teams and in the recent past, it has been the stage for the biggest failures and humiliations that Barcelona have suffered in their history. So, coming into the season, there was no illusions about Barcelona's capabilities as far as winning the Champions League was concerned, but I think that what we all wanted was to see the team be more competitive in big moments and to show more spirit and desire and fight and to not crumble and fall apart or throw away their advantages. Unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. Firstly, the team folded in a group decider against Juventus where literally all this team had to do was to avoid defeat by three goals or more. So naturally, they lost 3-0, failing to top their group and ending up with a tough draw as they faced PSG in the round of 16 and Barca were of course knocked out by Paris Saint-Germain after they lost 4-1 in the first leg after once again giving up a one-goal lead to lose comfortably. The second and final low from our campaign came from our failure to be competitive in the league. Sure, Barcelona came into the season in worse shape than the two Madrid teams and in any case, we were probably expecting that the league would be decided between those two Madrid teams. In truth though, Barcelona could have and should have been involved in the title race up until the last day of the season. Yes, it's not the type of thing that any of us expected at the start of the season for Barcelona to be in the title race, but they were in it, and once they found themselves in a position to take the initiative in the race, they folded by losing a home game against Granada and then dropping points away to Levante before again losing a home game to Celta de Vigo. Throwing the fact that Barcelona only managed to take 5 points from 6 matches against Real Madrid, Atletico Madrid and Sevilla and there's just not enough of a case to say that Barcelona had been competitive in the league. Alright now, I think we can move forward and talk a little bit about the highs from the just ended season and I think that there were 3 things in particular worth considering in this regard and first and foremost has to be the fact that the team ended their trophy drought. It took a final rematch in the Copa del Rey against Athletic Bilbao whom Barcelona had lost the Super Copa final to in order for the team to end an 18-month trophyless run as Barca overcame Bilbao 4-0 in what was arguably the team's best performance of the season. 
I should say, in fact, that the Copa del Rey saw some of Barcelona's most spirited performances as La Blaugrana had remarkable and memorable comebacks against both Granada and Sevilla. The second thing that I think is worth pointing out as a high in the just-ended season has been the emergence of young, talented players who stepped up to fill the void in the absence of key first-team players. As I pointed out earlier, the team was in dire need of some fresh, rejuvenated faces in order to replace the aging and disenchanted core of the team. So when players like Piquet, Umtiti, Roberto and Coutinho were unavailable, young players like Ronald Araujo, Oscar Miguesa, Serginho Dest, Pedri, Eli Moriba and Ricky Puch were already and available to step into the team and on most occasions, they delivered wonderful performances and so watching all these kids take up prominent roles brought a lot of joy and as such I think it was definitely a high in the season. The third and most significant high moment for me though from the past season has got to be the fact that Bartomeu could be going to prison. <laughs> now seriously, it has to be the return of Joan Laporta. The man who is easily the best president FC Barcelona has ever had was finally reinstalled as president after he won the 2021 presidential elections that were held in March. After more than half a decade of Bartomeu making bad decision after bad decision, Barcelona can now finally look forward to having a wise and capable leader at the helm. So with all that laid out, what is the way forward for Barcelona? Well, first and foremost, it starts with the aforementioned wise and capable leader making some big brave calls during this summer transfer window. After the demolition job that Bayern Munich executed on Barcelona, there was a lot of talk about revolutions and rebuilds and, you know, refreshes and resets, all those, all those re's. All the rebuilding amounted to though was the departures of Nelson Semedo, Luis Suarez, Ivan Rakitic and Arturo Vidal. Laporta now has to see to it that the dead wood at the club gets shipped out and that the players on high wages either sign less lucrative contracts or they find other clubs play for. Once that is done, the equally daunting task of strengthening the squad needs to be looked into. Currently, Barcelona are a team with a fragile defense and an attack that, outside of Messi, is just not consistently good enough. Now, obviously, on the attack front, Sergio Aguero is all but confirmed as a signing for Barca, and in addition, Memphis Depay is also rumored to be another target who is close to signing for Barcelona. On the defensive front, it looks like Emerson Royale is set to be heading to the camp now after he posted what looks like farewell messages to Betis on his Instagram account. In addition to that, Eric Garcia is also expected to be coming in on a free from Manchester City as well. And furthermore, Barca have a certain Jean-Claire Todibo who will be returning from his loan to Nice and could offer more options at centre-back. In addition to all that, Ajax's Lisandro Martinez is also being linked with a possible 25 million euro transfer to Barcelona. But I feel that that money would be better off spent on getting a left back as it has continued to be a problem area for Barcelona with the failure of Junior Frepo to adapt and excel. So someone like Jose Gaia would be potentially an upgrade on Jordi Alba who turns 33 soon. There have also been other rumors linking Barcelona with the likes of Khalidou Koulibaly and Matthias De Ligt. But one thing that's for certain is that Barca need to show up that defense as well as get rid of some of the dead wood in it. Finally, I will briefly give you my personal verdict or should I say my rating of the season's performance by Barcelona. Taking into consideration the difficult circumstances Barca was in financially, as well as administratively and also in the locker room. No one was expecting that this team would be involved in any title race and no one was expecting that this team would win any silverware this past season. Having said that then, this season could surely go down as a successful one, right? Well, not really. You see, at the end of the day, when we look back at Barcelona's performance in this season, decades from now, we're going to see that Barcelona reached a Supercopa final and they lost it to a legend We're going to see that Barcelona lost 3-1 to 
3-0 and 4-1 in crucial home games against Real Madrid, Juventus and Paris Saint-Germain. We're going to see that Barca had the opportunity to go one point clear at the top of La Liga with a win at home to Granada and they bottled it by losing 2-1. So as tough as this seems, Barcelona faced 14 big tests in the form of big games that they had to win up against Real Madrid, Juventus, PSG, Athletic Bilbao, Atletico Madrid and Sevilla. Of those 14 games, Barcelona only managed to win 4 and they lost 7. Because of that, my rating for Barcelona's 2020-2021 season was a 6 out of 10. Well. That brings us to the end of this rather lengthy video, which is, you know, uncharacteristic for me. But this has been one of my longest ever uploads, and it's been with a good reason though, since I've been basically summarizing the entire season, a whole nine months of football. So thank you very much for staying tuned this far. You're a legend if you're still tuned in. Let me know in the comments your best and worst moments of the season, and also give me your rating of the season. Thank you once again for tuning in, have a great day and Forza Basa.